All right. In this video, we are going to work an application problem um, having to do with force. Um, one thing I do want to mention before we start, um, when I have multiple forces, let's say uh, I have F1 and F2, these are tugboats pushing on this liner. All right. If I say that F is the ref the resultant force, like how much is actually the boat being pushed all together, I actually can find that resultant force by just adding all forces together. All forces acting on whatever the thing I'm looking at. If I add all forces together, I get the resultant force. So what I need to do is if I want to find the resultant force of, on this ocean liner, I need to find the component forces. What that means is like this F2 here, I want to know how much is it pushing it that way. Same thing here. I'd like to know how much I'm pushing it that way. And then we could also look like this one's pushing it down some, this one's pushing it up some like that. We could add those forces together. So what we're actually doing is adding our components. Move that over. All right. So let's deal with F1. F1 is down here first. Okay. So this is F1. And we can consider this as a, a triangle. And break down each force. Now it tells me that each boat is exerting a force of 400. So I know that the magnitude of both of these will be 400. Okay, so if I'm trying to find components here, let's do F1 first. And I'm trying to find just the X component, the X components down here. Using trig, that's a cosine, right? Given this angle. Right? I would find the cosine of that. Oh, here's my advice. Um, Going through this, anytime that you're dealing with some kind of vector, here's my vector going this way, right? Put um, an xy plane right at the beginning of the vector. Make it a standard form from where it's at. This is going to help you with degrees, and this will make more sense when we look at F2. Now, they told us in the picture, 20 degrees. All right, so if I'm wanting to find the x component of this, I would take, all right, let's call it x here. We'll call it x1. I would take cosine of 20 degrees that is x1 over 400 which tells me x1 is equal to 400 cosine 20 degrees i'm just going to write that the way it is right now 400 cosine 20 degrees i that is my i component now to find the j component I would do sine of 20 degrees because that's my y of x of y1, we'll call that y1 up here, is y1 over 400. It's using trig, right? Sine of that would be opposite over adjacent. So y1 <clears throat> equals 400 sine of 20 degrees. So that's plus, I leave this 400 sine of 20 degrees. J. All right. I like to take these um, and go ahead and write it out with a decimal um, because cosine of 20 isn't on my unit. So the 20 degrees isn't on my unit circle. So I like to grab these as a decimal. I'm going to write it down here because we're going to do this again. <clears throat> F1 is if I plug all that into my calculator, I got 375.877i. I just rounded. I round out quite a bit, three or four usually, plus 136.808. J. All right, that's F1. Let's do <clears throat> F2 in a different color. So F2 now. All right, I have the same thing. So like I said earlier, I draw a set of axes here to help me out. They told me in the picture that this was negative 20 degrees. I don't want to use the negative. I would rather use a positive. So what I do every time is I just figure out what's the positive angle that goes with it. Well, that's 20 degrees, so it's 340. So if I'm doing that same thing here, let's go ahead and draw a triangle. I got x2 and y2. But I'm going to use that other angle now. So if I'm looking and following this rule here, it's pretty easy to follow. That's 400 cosine 20. So this one's going to be 400 cosine 340 degrees i. Notice that sine is my y, it's the same thing. So plus 400 sine of 340 degrees. J. Right? I'm going to write that down in decimal form. So I get 
375.877i minus 136.808j. Now remember, we're trying to find F, the resultant force. F is equal to the first force plus the second force. So when I add vectors, remember I add component-wise, so this tells me that I add the 375.877 with the other one, the, the I's. So I get 751.754I. And then if I add the Y components, we get 0J. Now, they ask for resultant. Um, that's the magnitude. So we want the magnitude of that. If you do the magnitude, you'll get the same as the X component since the Y is 0. You zero square 0, you get 0, and then you're just undoing the square for the first component. So this is pounds. It's a force. All right, so let's recap real quick. We used triangles in our picture. We drew the picture, um, <clears throat> and we used trig, and we're going to get quick at this because we're going to do it a bunch, to come up with the components of each vector. The two blue vectors, the boats being pushed. We looked at those two boats, we drew triangles, and we found X and Y for those triangles. That told me the components for my vector. Once we had both components here, all written out, and I did the decimals, to find our resultant force, we just add our vectors. So we added the I's together, we added the J's together. That's the resultant vector that we got, but they wanted the resultant force, not vector. Resultant force, maybe there's a note you need to make for yourself. Resultant force is the magnitude. All right, that's it. These um these are hard and they take some time. So the ones I assigned, use the solution manual if you need to get unstuck. Um, these can be pretty difficult.